Hey, RVF family. Uh, it's good to kind of see you as usual. Um, so quick video, some of the questions that we got from Sunday morning after Sunday morning service. We just had three questions this week. Again, in the future, um, we'll try to do a Q&A each week. So if you have questions as you're sitting listening to the sermon, or even the day after as you're reflecting, you can email them to us uh, at info at rvfchurch.org, or uh, you can just put them in the comments during the video on Sunday morning, and we'll do our best to get to your questions and answer them and respond. Um, maybe not answer, but respond in some ways. Um, so question number one this week is this. I've often heard as Christians we're supposed to be meek but not doormats. I've taken that to mean be humble and don't let people walk all over you. But Jesus was willing to be completely crushed. So what is the line between humility and assertiveness for us as Christ followers? Well, first of all, I think it's important to acknowledge that humility and assertiveness are not antithetical to one another. It's not as though being assertive automatically makes you prideful and brash, and it doesn't mean that being humble automatically means you're unable to be assertive in any situation. Jesus was highly assertive, especially with the religious leaders and then even with people who were caught in sin. Think about the woman at the well. Um, Jesus is speaking with her. He says, you're right. The man you're with isn't your husband. In fact, you've had five husbands and this guy's not even your husband. And then they talk more. And at the end, he always says, go and sin no more. He's, he's a highly assertive personality. And yet we wouldn't accuse him of being prideful or brash um, or too forward. I think what's most important is motive. Jesus was assertive for the good of the other, but he was always humble for the good of the other. He, would, he humbled himself even to the point of death, death on the cross. Um, and so both assertiveness and meekness are about loving other people. Uh, whether you're assertive um, and bold in the confrontation of injustice or humble enough to allow yourself to be wronged for the good of the other, what's most important is that it's motivated toward the good of others and the glory of God. So culture would tell us to stand up for ourselves, uh, have some pride. Jesus shows us what it means to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Culture tells us, speak your mind, express yourself. And Jesus shows us what it means to speak truth, but to do so in love for the sake of the other and the glory of God. So again, I don't think that meekness and assertiveness are antithetical to one another or opposite ideas. I think, in fact, they're both necessary components if we are going to love people well. And Jesus struck that balance perfectly as an example for us. Question number two. Fully understanding how counterintuitive it is, why is Christ's narrative example of power so difficult for us to truly buy into even as believers? Well, first of all, I think you're right. Um, that Jesus's view of power, his view of authority and what, what it looks like is counterintuitive to us post-fall. So because of sin, we are twisted and our view of power and authority is equally twisted because of the fall. But I think on top of that, we're also fed the opposite narrative constantly in our culture. Um, at every turn, every news story, most movies and pop culture, they're all telling us that you got to look out for number one because nobody else will, nice guys finish last, etc., etc. And unfortunately, that does prove true in one sense in our culture. However, I do think it's interesting that even within our culture, there's a critique of the way that we do power dynamics. There is a sense that the way we're doing power and authority and and the ideas of like oppression uh, and suffering, there's something broken about how we're doing things, but everyone is afraid that if they begin to approach it differently, then they're gonna ultimately lose out. So I think a big piece of this as Christians for us is that we fear that if we do it Jesus's way, it's not gonna produce the results that we want. And I also think that one of the reasons that's the case is because our view of the good life is often more shaped by American ideas of individualism and autonomy rather than kingdom living in submission to God. And so we desire autonomy. And in the kingdom, the way to freedom is submission. 
And so we start with twisted desires. And because of that, we have trouble embracing a system and an ideology that also assumes a different desire and vision of what the good life is. If our vision of the good life was truly about an ever-deepening intimacy with God and others as we partner with God to cultivate his good world, I imagine that our willingness to embrace humility and self-sacrifice would actually greatly increase. And so I guess to summarize my answer there, yes, it's counterintuitive to us because of the fall, but then I think as Christians we still struggle um, to have God's view of what the good life is. And I think the more and more our view of the good life can be shaped into what God says is the good life, Jesus' approach to power and authority will become much more intuitive as opposed to counterintuitive for us. But it starts with what we truly want, what we truly believe is the good life. And if what we believe is the good life is freedom and autonomy, how American culture defines it, then Jesus' paradigm is always going to be challenging and difficult for us. But if we begin to understand true freedom as submission to God, if we truly see the good life as an ever-deepening intimacy with God as we work alongside him to cultivate his good world, then humility and self-sacrifice become much more intuitive for us, much more uh, useful, I guess you could say, and we'll begin to, to take a much larger part in how we interact with others and with this world. And finally, question number three, um, someone writes, I can't help but admire the beautiful season of Passion Week leading up to Easter during such a time of uncertainty and fear. All worldviews come from people who lived, taught, and died, but in Christianity, we can claim that there was a resurrection. Does anyone else feel uncertain, but also optimistic and anticipatory of the shaking of our culture that's occurring? I think this is a really good and insightful observation and question. I think it's right on and probably a common feeling. Within Christianity, we have room to embrace the reality of loss and grief and suffering because of the cross, but we also have the power of resurrection to bring hope, joy, and healing. I think it's really difficult to anticipate the long-term effects of this pandemic on our culture, uh, but I think it's right to anticipate. There's going to be a lot of things that we end up mourning and grieving the loss of, while at the same time knowing that God's restoring power is present in moving us forward from here. And so, yes, I think that we live in the tension of lamenting, grieving, and mourning over the heartache the loss of how life was, but we also do have the joy of anticipating God's restoring power moving forward. I think a balance I would also want to bring to that is that we may not actually get to see with our own eyes all of the things. We believe, right, that God works all things to the good of those who love him, including pandemics, including big cultural shifts and change because of the pandemic. However, we may not exactly be privy to all the good things that God does as a result of this in our lifetime. And so I think that it is good and right for us to be careful that as we are living in a culture that is grieved, that is mourning, that is hurting, that we sit with everybody else in this situation, that we sit in the ashes with them, that we grieve and we mourn, that we're mourning with those who are mourning. And yes, we don't grieve and mourn as those who have no hope because Jesus is alive, because he is restoring all things. Um, so I think that's a, that's a great tension to try to live in without diminishing one or the other. Those are our questions for this week. I hope that was helpful. Again, as you have questions throughout the week, email them to us at info at rvfchurch.org and we'll get to them the best that we can. We love you guys. Grace and peace. <laughs>